page when you see it. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And tonight I am very excited to talk to Miss Radia Johnson, or AKA Stars Pen. Um, she just released a book with several uh, other survivors, Resurrection and Heals. So we're going to talk to her about being a co author within that book or with that book. Um, we're also going to talk to her about her story and her being a survivor of domestic violence. Um, we're going to talk to her about her organization and what she's doing in the community. So um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, Ms. Radia has supported me a lot with Butterfly Visions Project and the publisher of my book. So I always like to return the favor to my, to my friends, to my mentors, to fellow advocates in the community. And uh, Ms. Radia is just an amazing person, all around amazing person. Um, she's always positive. She's always always supporting um, of people in the community, always being there to help anyone out that needs help. And now she's co-author of her new book, Resurrection and Heals. So I'm very, very excited to talk to her today, to get to know her here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So I hope that you are going to make time to tune in tonight. Um, at the end of the interview, I am going to be giving away two of her books, Resurrection and Heals, to one of our listeners tonight. So make sure that you stay on for the entire interview so that you can get to know Ms. Redia and also um, possibly win a copy of her new book, Resurrection and Heals. So hello, Ms. Redia. How are you doing? Hello. Thanks for having me. I can't complain. Good, <laughs> I'm good, good. Do a little disclaimer though. I, I, I'm so humbled by your words. Like I just, I'm, I am, I try to be, I've gotten so much better with being a, a better person and, and not flying off the handle. And I kind of want to share this testimony really quick, if that's okay. Oh yeah, of course. This is your interview. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I posted it, but I don't know. A lot of people don't read like long posts and stuff like that, but it, this was just amazing to me. I, we were in Charlotte and um, long story short, the valet switched up my keys and my five um, and left it in the car. So when we got out the car, all we had in our hand was the ignition key. So oh, the keys okay. were locked in the car. Right. We were locked out the car at, um, at seven um, restaurant and lounge, actually getting ready to get some food. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so normally me, I'm a big crybaby. Um, I cry when I get mad. It's almost uncontrollable. I know that's a sign of depression, you guys, so watch out for that. But that is a, um, a, one of my toxic traits. I will cry. And when I say I was on calm on a thousand, I did not freak out. I didn't cry. I didn't curse. I didn't yell. I just <laughs> stood there and sucked it up. And I, when I say I was so proud of myself, I couldn't believe it. Because normally I would have been like pounded on stuff. Like, why did they do this to me? Why did the ballet, you know, curse somebody out? But I, I, I had to pat myself on the back because I handled it so well. Long story right. short, again, the locksmith cost me $70 on the spot, right? Now, this is oh, COVID. No. So, yes, honey, a sister is unemployed. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it was, it hurt me to give up that $70, but I went on. I didn't fuss about it. I just gave it the $70. He was like, I'll be there in 11 minutes. So I'm like, okay, cool. Wait, 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 wait. Was your, wasn't your key in the car? It was in the car, but the door was locked. So the ballet that left the key in the car, they didn't pay yeah. for that. <laughs> no, and I see, I tried that. And that's where I was thinking that I was going to go over the top because I felt like they would have, should have been responsible for that yeah. because they called me initially and said, was asking about the mix up with the keys. And I'm like, use common sense. You know, what is a clicker and what is the ignition key? So they right. left the clicker in the car and gave me the ignition key and me not thinking, you know, we locked the doors. So anyway, the, the guy came out, he got in, you know, I gave him the $70. By this time we are tired and it's not, we're not getting no food. So we went on back to the hotel. As we were coming through the lobby, we ran into some people that were having like a little family reunion, little get together in the hotel. And um, the guy was like, I said, well, you should get a copy of my book. And he was like, well, how many do you have with you? And I said, I'm not sure. Homie pulled out a hundred dollar bill and just said, give me a hundred dollars worth. Nice. So when I say I got the 70 back and then some and sold out of all of wet in the hotel room the first what? night. So what? yeah, it was, <laughs> it was awesome. 
he actually had me sign each book to the people that were there that he actually bought the books for. So it was really like a moment where I felt like, um, and I hope this will help somebody else. Don't lose it. Because I, if I honestly feel like if I would have lost it, like I usually do, yeah. that wouldn't have happened. I would have messed up that whole blessing because my attitude <laughs> was wrong. So I, right. that was just in that moment. And I had to share that because I'm really, I'm always on the positive tip, but it's so hard to stay positive sometimes, especially in these times, especially yeah. when it's $70 and it's 10 o'clock at night and it's cold and everything exactly. is happening, you know? So I, I just reach anybody listening, just do not lose it. Keep your composure because God got something for you. And I even yeah, tried to yeah. give him his change, you know, give him the $25 back. And uh -huh. he was like, no, you just keep that. You know, so it wow. was like, wow. You know, it was just one of those moments where it was like, okay, my daddy was like, I got you, baby. Just hold on. We got you in your car. Now uh -huh. pay attention next time, but I'm going to get you this money back. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> um, when you sharing that made me think of uh, last week when I had my interview with um, Tina, um, Tina Torres here uh -huh. on the Speak Up and Inspire series. And mm -hmm. she, I didn't know that I didn't put my phone on mute. <laughs> And there was something that I was trying to get my husband to do or th something, something was going on. And I started whining and pouting as she was listening to me, whining and pouting to my husband. <laughs> yeah, it'd be those moments, child. Be, I had one of those on Wu Show. Shout out to Big Wu. I thought I was on mute and my daughter was in there eating my egg rolls, girl. And I was like, oh, I know that. And he was like, oh, I hear somebody's mama in the background. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, she was like, um, by the way, I just heard you whining like a baby. <laughs> I was like, oh, oops, I'm sorry. It was a good whine. It would be all right. Yeah, yeah. That was just me being spoiled. And it, I, hope, I don't know if it was just her or if everybody heard me, but everybody heard me being spoiled last Monday. It's okay. Be like this sometimes. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, um, well, nice. I'm glad that you were able to get that money back. I would still follow up with that uh, ballet company and be like, uh, hey. Right. That's the Hyatt. <laughs> Hyatt downtown Charlotte. Yeah. Okay. Terrible. All right. All right. I'll, I will be more conscious when we go to uh, to Fahrenheit and make sure that our, we got all our keys. From the yeah. And we couldn't even get in. The restaurant was packed. We couldn't, and I'm a guest at the hotel now. Why can't I get in? Right. They were just so terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I was going to come back to, to WET, but while we're on it, <laughs> let's talk about your first book. <laughs> so, oh, yes, yeah. tell us, what was it, what's the title of your first book? And tell us what led you to write um, WET. Well, the first one was actually um, a When a Woman's Fed Up. That was my first project. Oh, my first okay, project. okay. All right. um, and that was so we're going to talk about all your books. How about that? Let's go back to the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was actually my first writing project at all. It was an anthology um, with Jessica Mosley out of Indianapolis. Some amazing women were on that project. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a nice time celebrating our first book release. A lot of first time authors. That was my first time. So I think that gave me the courage to do it. Um, and I knew that I've always wanted to write scripts. I'm still into the movie thing. I'm still really big on that. And when I write a book, I see it in film. So even with When a Woman's Fed Up, because it was more of my story, um, mm -hmm. I still see that on film as well. So Wet was a way to come to a different genre. Um, so I yes. went to the erotica and then I went back to the next one, um, which is a resurrection in hills, which is more of a group project. I think I kind of wanted to toot my own horn and just be like, yeah, I can write anything. <laughs> I don't just have to I believe that. that. I believe you can. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that you can write whatever it is that you set your mind to. I definitely Thanks. believe that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So resurrection in hills is out. Mm -hmm. You did your launch party on yesterday. Um, so tell us how did the party go? Um, who are the co-authors? And give us a little bit more. Tell us, tell us more about this book. Okay, uh, a Resurrection Heals is, is what I like to um, call a guide to a mental rebirth. Um, and my co-authors are Kendra D, Miss L.S. Wilson, and Danielle Herset. And we all have, um, well, Miss L.S. Wilson, her chapter is really cute because it's called Who the Hell is Marla, which is actually a tribute <laughs> to her, um, who she had to wake up to as in the hospital because of the gun violence she was under an alias 
So I thought it was really, really cool to name her chapter after her alias because she woke up like, well, who the hell is Marla? Because my name is Mook, you know? So, right, right. <laughs> so we named her chapter. She was a victim of gun violence um, and she's a survivor. She's supposed to be here. Um, shot with 12 gauge shotgun three times. And she's like 90 pounds. So I, I look at her like my little soldier. Um, oh my goodness. And her story is really, really, it's funny. It has some fun. The situation is not, but the way it was written, um, you know, we, we took her spirit and kind of threw it in there. So it won't, you know, her purpose comes through those gunshots, comes through those pellets. Uh, same with all the other girls, Danielle, domestic violence, Kendra D. Um, her story was about sexual abuse, amazing story of forgiveness. And when you read it, I wanted it to be personal. Um, and that's why I did a cover the way I did with us on the cover. You know, a lot of people don't do that. So we, I wanted to step outside the box a little bit with this one and, and make it personal for them as well. Um, and, and make it an actual group project. Cause I don't know if you know a lot about anthologies but a lot of people don't do that. It's the author's name and it's their book and whoever's on the inside is, oh well. I didn't want that. I wanted everybody to feel a part of this project and, and, and not just be Stars Pen. Yeah, it's Stars Pen's production but they did that, you know what I mean? And I wanted that to come out for us. Their names are on Amazon as authors so it's not just me. Um, their pictures are in the book on their bio pages. And the book is really, um, we tried to focus more on the come up, not so much on the pain, um, not so much about what we went through, but where we went right, where we woke up and realized um, it's not so much about what they did to you. And I say this a lot, it's about why you thought you wasn't worth more than that. Why you didn't think you were worth more. Why you thought that a slap upside the head was what you needed. Um, and, and that goes for me too. I had to stay, I was in a state of amnesia for eight months. And I know women that I've counseled and, and life coached um, that have been in domestic violence situations for 20 and 30 years. And I'm just like, baby, you know, eight months, like it took me out of here. 200 mm -hmm. pounds, knocking me upside my head, um, like could have killed me. So I yeah. look at these women and a lot of times, oh, you guys are weak. You're weak for staying. It takes a lot of strength to be able to endure something of some kind of abuse for whatever reason. And a lot of times to us, it's a big reason. It's our kids. Um, it's a custody battle. It's a shelter. We don't have anywhere to go. Um, it's a lot of things that would make a woman stay. Um, I can get through this one more day. I can get through this last punch. Uh, you know, and I tried to fight, but I, I'm like a buck 30. So, you know, every time I grab the knife, I was scared I was gonna get my throat cut with it. So it right. came to a point where it was like, okay, what you gonna do? You know, so it's it's here. And I like to say, and I get a lot of people are mad at me and they say that I'm not compassionate, but there's no way for me not to be compassionate because I lived it. One thing I do know is that we as women, we have to start taking more responsibility for the things that we allow. Because again, like I said, he's gonna pay for that. Whatever he did to me, that's coming back on him tenfold. Um, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do about that debt that he's got to pay to God and to society. Nothing I can, whether I want to put a bullet in his head or not, that's not, that's not how that's going to work. Um, but it works for me here because I have to sit back and say, well, my dear, why did you take that? Why did you think that that was okay? Because he's going to do what he's going to do to somebody else, somebody before me, somebody after me, but am I going to allow that? So I, I feel like once you stay after that first hit, and I'll say this to me. Once I stayed after that first hit, I became a volunteer to my own abuse. And I just believed that. And I did it because I wasn't right in here. And I'm woman enough to admit that. Um, and right. a lot of women are not there yet. And that's a part of healing. A part of that, right. a part of your healing is being able to accept, accept the fact that you were contributorily negligent to your own abuse. I don't want the emails. Don't send them to me. It is what it is. Don't go in my inbox. It is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, oh, you're, you're being mean, you're being uncompassionate, and you can't blame the victim. Yeah. I'm not blaming anybody, but we have to take responsibility for what we allow, period. Yeah, yeah. we didn't take and 10 I, and slap ourselves, yeah, you know, but we have to take responsibility yeah. for allowing it. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I agree with you. I think that, um, you know, when I talk to ladies, uh, especially in the shelters, one, one of the things that I, I try to impress upon, yeah, impress upon to them is that being, going from being a victim to a survivor starts with your, your mindset and your mental capacity and your mental health. Um, you have to start there. You have to admit to yourself that you are a victim. You have to admit to yourself that you're in this situation. 
and that this is not love and that you're in a situation that you need to get out of. And until that you, until you can admit to yourself that you deserve more and that you deserve better and that you are a victim and that you are in a domestic violence relationship, then you're gonna continue remaining in an abusive relationship and you're gonna continue to be a victim of that relationship. And once you make that decision, that you know enough is enough and I deserve more, that's when your healing starts. Your healing starts when you take that first step and say, I gotta get out of here. And even if it takes you six months, if it takes you a year, you are planning to get out of there. And that's that's the first step. And you're right, I, I agree with you. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go on and say this because I've said it before. I agree with you that, you know, we, a lot of times for, for me, I had infants you know, getting out of an abusive relationship. That's hard. It's hard to, to, to leave your home and all your possessions and take your children and start all over. That is hard to do. But I did not want to be in a relationship or a marriage where it was abusive. I did, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want that for myself and I didn't want that for my kids. And once you know where you are and what's going on, you, you have to do what you need to do to get yourself out of that situation, even if you don't have, have kids. And yeah. we have to take accountability for our actions and our part in it, because if we continue to stay in that relationship, then it's going to continue happening. And if you don't get the help that you need, then unfortunately you're in a, in a relationship and very aware of what is going on. Um, and the other thing is too, when, for me, believing that it's accountability for the for victims is that a lot of times women stay for the house, for the money, for the cushion, for you know all the things, the 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 possessions and material things that they get from the marriage. Um, the, you know, um, for for so many different reasons, and not about the fact that this man might kill you one day. Yeah. Or it, it, just to say that you have a man. A lot of women stay in, in abusive relationships just to say, you know, I got a man, especially if he's a good looking man and all the other women want him because they don't know what kind of dog he is, you know, they stay yeah. because they don't yeah. they don't want to be single. So um I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. Loneliness is a trip. Loneliness yes. is the devil, honey, and, and it will get us every time. I just see here's the thing. When it comes to um, and I like to, I think with, when it comes to the statistics. Um, black women, Hispanic women, we're, we're always here. So I start mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. And when it comes to us in the black community, we're so quick. What stays, what happens in this house stays in this house. Do not tell mm -hmm. my business outside this house, mm -hmm. which was really my purpose for starting My Sister's Dreamer. I went through domestic violence for eight months by myself. That's mm -hmm. not a woe is me. Oh, feel sorry for me. That's listen. I did that. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. But every, everybody can't do that. Everybody not can't take that. Right. Not everybody and can do that. Mm -hmm. And if there's no support system, that leans them towards staying longer. So that was the reason for starting a nonprofit. I would love for it to go global. We just have a plethora of women that you could just pick up the phone and call one of these women and they're there for you. Whether it's a plane ticket, come on, I got you. Whether it's a, a hotel room, whether it's a meal, whether it's a talk on the phone. We don't do that enough. And then when we do, we get to the point where it's somebody always got to be ignorant about something. So I, I would love to also put that out there for us as Black women. Grow up. Um, I think that we can be able to, me and Tiffany, we have an argument. I'm going to call Tiffany back the next day and be like, what you doing, chick? That's how right. I roll. Right. Um, if I can't do that with you, then we don't need to be in the same circle because then there's no growth. We're going to always be stagnant. If I can't tell you, honey, that outfit is not popping. You don't, have to agree with me. you don't have to agree with me or even like it but i need for you to respect the fact that i'm being your friend and telling you that you need to put your butt up because it's hanging out or whatever you, <laughs> you know or tell yeah. me you know what i mean my eyebrow coming off i'm walking around for three hours and you ain't saying nothing we can't roll together no more <laughs> you know what i mean we just can't yeah so when we do that we we get we take away some of the power that these men have over us because That's they know true. we can't stand each other they know we, we fighting against one another who got the longest weave. And you, you heard me say that before I say it all the time. We got to do better. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm even, I'm not, I'm not excluding myself, um, but I'm always trying to reach and reach and reach. And I get snapped back. And I, I want to reach out to these women and stop snapping, you guys, because you're cutting right. off your own blessings while you're cutting off my little fingers. Cutting off your own blessings. So right. reach back for your sister because you never know what's, what she got going on. And people always think that I'm so happy and I'm always so upbeat. 
girl, I got so much stuff going on. It's not even funny. What keeps me moving mm -hmm. is that I can help somebody else. That's the only right. thing. And if I couldn't write it or work it or be on here talking to you and telling somebody else about my testimony, if I can do it from where I come from, then they can do it too. Because mm -hmm. I've had people all my life tell me, you ain't going to be shit. I'm sorry. Well, am I supposed to curse on here? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. No. This is, yeah, this is they, candy they, time. Time. You, you ain't no, going to be resting. You know, you 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 gonna be laying on your back. I had one lady ask me one day, um, you know, what is it that you want to do when you grow up? I went to Barbara's on when I was like 16, so I always thought I was kind of cute a little bit. Um, you, know. <laughs> you are and cute, I, girl. So you I, are I, cute. Thank you. So I did the little modeling thing and I got accepted and everything. And the lady asked me, you know, um, what is it that you want to do? And I said, I, you know, I want to try modeling. And I was 16, I never forget it, like it was yesterday. What makes you think you're model material? The words stuck in my head so bad that it, it was almost like a curse. And this, when I was 16, I'm 47 years old now. Mm -hmm. So that is still stuck here. So that's another thing I would like to tell your viewers. Be careful mm -hmm. what you say to people. Tell the yeah. truth now. Don't, don't sugarcoat. That's not what I'm saying. But that was mean. That wasn't right. encouraging. It right. wasn't uh, motivating. It was mean. It was like, well, gosh, maybe I don't, you know, maybe that's exactly what I thought. Never picked up another picture, never modeled, never, until mm -hmm. I got grown. Oh. So, I, you know, that's what I mean by women. Um, we, we shouldn't do that to one another. Right. We got to be there for each other because just like our black men need each other, nobody going to be there for us. Right. If we can't be even be there for each other. Um, and that's just the way I am. I, I got a big mouth. I say what's on my mind. If it don't come out right, I'm sorry, but I need you to respect that that's who I am. And if you mm -hmm. can't handle that, then go away. Don't mm -hmm. be against me. Don't work against me. You don't have to like it, but don't work against me. Um, and that's the same with domestic violence. You know, be there for your sisters. Right, right. Um, you mentioned statistics, so I'm going to read. It says, on average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, during one year, this equates to more than 10 million women and men. Make sure I emphasis on men, because men can be abused too. Um, mm -hmm. One in four women and one in nine men experience severe intimate partner physical violence. Um, one in three women and one in four men have experienced some form of physical violence by an intimate partner, including a range of behaviors such as slapping, shoving, and pushing. Um, it also says that one in seven women and one in 25 um, men have been injured by an intimate partner. So they're not just being hit, they're actually being hurt. Right. Um, and then one in 10 women have been raped by an intimate partner. So these are some, some really serious uh, statistics. And I just want to, to, to go back to your disclaimer that we're not saying that victims are responsible. We're not saying that we're putting any blame on victims. We're not doing that at all. We're just saying that if you are in an abusive relationship, look at yourself and try to find out what you need to do to gain your strength to get out. Um, instead of staying in a, a relationship that you know is abusive, especially if you have children in the house. Miss um, uh, Iris Benton posted earlier, she is the founder of Divination, and she posted earlier about the fact that if there is a gun in the house, that triple 10 times the, the um, uh, mm, can't get the word, it increases the chance of domestic violence yes. when there is a gun in the house. So yes. there are so many things that we really need to pay attention to, especially if we are still in, in an abusive relationship and what we need to do. There's so many res resources out there that is available. Um, we talk to victims every day. I know you, Ms. Radia, you talk to victims every day. Um, there are resources out there, a lot of resources, whether it's grassroots, whether it's small nonprofits or whether it's, it's huge, huge nonprofits. There are resources out there. If you are a victim and you know that you're in an abusive relationship and it's not just being hit, it could be words, it could be financial, it could be spiritual. There's different forms of domestic violence. Gain that strength, pray, lean on your support system and take, make that move to get out of that relationship because we do not want you to be another DV homicide victim. That, we don't want that or your children. Um, so, Ms. Trudia, tell us, you said eight months. Tell us about those eight months. How was, how was that for you and what was going on? You know, it's weird. Um, 
again, I go back to these people always think I'm this pillar of strength, but I have honestly, this is probably like my fourth time actually speaking about my abuse. Um, I, I'm not complete yet. And I, I again, I'm a, I'm a woman enough to admit that I'm not completely healed yet. I feel like I'm still a little embarrassed um, and not so much by being hit, but I think by allowing it um, for me. I, I thought I was separated from my husband actually. So a lot of people didn't even know. Um, to this day, people are still like, huh? Uh, you know, so no, I really, really kept it hush. My kids knew um, a little bit, but most of it happened when they were away for weekends and stuff like that. Um, and I got a little, I, we were separated for about two years and I got a little bored, got a little lonely and I decided I was gonna just date, you know, and, and have a little boo. And I honestly saw the red flags day one. Um, I, it was something here. And, you know, people that know me from a long, long time will tell you that I have this, this, they try to call me a little boo-ha sometimes, but I'm not, I'm not a witch. So, but I can see, it's almost like God will, will, I can hear a conversation that I'm not even there for. And I've proven it because I've asked people, you know, it was this said in that conversation and I was right. So he gives me this, this thing where I can kind of feel and see stuff. So the very first day I met him, um, I saw what I needed to see. And that's why I said we are contributorily negligent because I, I ignored it because I was lonely. Um, and that's where we have to go here and figure out what we need to pacify that loneliness so we don't become destructive um, and, and, and fatally destructive. So it was more of a, at first, I think it was, it, it wasn't apparent. It wasn't like, okay, this is what's going to happen. But I knew it was something. Um, the first hit actually came out of nowhere. I don't even think, I, if I remember correctly, I think I just walked in the house and I believe I said something about some fried chicken or something like that. And the next thing I know, I was looking at the floor. Mm -hmm. um, from, so the hit was just so hard. I, I hit the floor. At this point, I'm in shock you know, by, it probably was about two months after the relationship actually started. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I automatically ran for the door because I, I've seen this, you know, been there, done that. I've seen this happen before. So I ran for the door. And when I noticed him right behind me and his arm just shut the door and he was screaming stuff like, it's going to be a first 48 in here. And I'm like, now look, I haven't seen the first 48. Yeah, that means that, I'm not dying. <laughs> you know, this is what's going through my mind. So I'm just taking punches. I'm taking punches. I'm taking hits. Um, to this day, I have like a very small chip, um, very hard to see, but I can feel it on the edge of my tooth from where he hit me. And I, I, I ran into the door and it chipped the edge of my tooth. Um, that same night, I remember him wrapping a towel around my head. Now, to me, it was like some psycho stuff because I, I, I mean, I, I've been in some fights, but to literally take a towel and wrap it around somebody's head, it was almost like a horror movie. Um, because I can't see. Now I'm on my knees, I'm on the floor. So I'm on my knees and he's just hitting me and beating me in my back and kicking me. And I'm just balled up in the fetal position. And again, I've got this towel over my head so I can't see. So I feel the towel start to tighten. Towel is tightening and he's almost choking me. So at this point, I'm just, I'm just kind of laying there. And then something just kind of kicked in and I start swinging. Every time I swung, I got hit harder. So it was either I'm going to die in here um, and I, I make light of it now because I have to. So I don't cry because I'm not I feel like crying is um, a part of my healing. So I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> um, but I, I remember the next day. You hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. The next day shouldn't have been a next day. There were several. Um, the next day I woke up and he was leaning down. I was laying on the couch and was trying to massage my foot where my foot was messed up from fighting all night. And you could tell it was really swollen and really, really red. And, and now that I look back on it, I think that I just sat there. I just sat there and I don't even know if I was terrified to move at this point because I knew that one, at this point, I'm just like one wrong move. I, I'm, I, this clown is crazy. Now I'm thinking first yeah. 48, towels right. wrapped around my head. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So the arguing, the fighting, all of this stuff went on for a while, um, about a good six or seven months. Mm -hmm. The seventh month, I remember um, one bad fight where he actually picked me up and like, like this and kind of ran me through the whole house and slammed me into a wall. So you could literally like see my body print in the sheetrock um, and just threw me there and walked back in the living room and sat there. So something is wrong, you know, <laughs> 
I'm in my mind again. I'm thinking, okay, something is it's not me. It's and it's not even him because and, I, and not in his defense at all. But sometimes you have to think about it's not always mental. It's alcohol. It's pills. Whatever drug they might be on because he was snapping out of nowhere. Um, I was about to ask alcohol. you that. That first yeah. time that he is he um, attacked you, what brought it on, or do you know? I honestly, to this day, have no idea. I remember walking in the house from work, um, and it was, something was said about some fried chicken, and mm -hmm. then I just remember hitting the floor. And then after that, every time he would abuse me, it was for nothing. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely for nothing. I did tell him one day that the sex was trash, and I should have known better than to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's you really do not talk about that to Girl. no man. <laughs> Girl, no man. When I said that, I should have known. But see, now this was the seventh month. This is where Rydia is starting to remember who the hell she is now. Right. So I'm getting cocky. And it's mm -hmm. I'm gonna die in here, or, you know, it is what it is. This is not mm -hmm. happening no more. So then we're really fighting and we're really fighting. Um, and mind you, now this is my house. And I had so much stuff going on. I'm not a police caller. I'm not getting ready to um have a whole lot of people in my house and my business and trying to come take my children. That's another fear. Um, with domestic violence victims. Yes, we true. don't want all of that extra stuff. Um, you know, you, you want to be, you have to be uncomfortable to get comfortable. We know that. Um, but don't make yourself uncomfortable. And a lot of times that's what we end up doing because I, in my mind, I'm trying to save everything else and keep everything else normal except for me. And that's where I messed up at. But by the grace of God, um, you know, I started to fight back and I started to, to get this, this cocky attitude, you know, this is my house and you don't belong here. So right. either you're going to die or, <laughs> you know, I'm going to die or we're going to die here together. Three o'clock in the morning, in the middle of February, popping pills. I don't know what he was doing in the bathroom. I could hear something going on in the bathroom and I'm sitting there like, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. But before it could even come, I, I was ready. I had got up. Didn't get too ready, but I had a, enough t-shirt on and my daughter was there this time. So he comes out and just starts throwing stuff, just starts fighting. And I just grabbed my baby, three o'clock in the morning. I was in Greensboro, that's where I was living at. And I had a friend um, that lived around the corner. And Lisa, I love Lisa to death, shout out to Lisa. Um, and I don't think she understood because if you don't know that those situations, you don't know how to treat people or handle people in those situations. So I don't blame her at all. Um, but. I knocked on three doors that night, damn near running for my life. Nobody answered it. And I understood that too. It's three o'clock in the morning. It's crazy yeah. baby out here. Yeah. So I ran to her house. Um, she let me in. And the first thing she said to me is, I don't understand why you're here and he's still there. To a domestic violence victim, that's a shot in the foot. Yeah. Um, I know she didn't mean it that way, but this is for anybody listening. If somebody ever comes to you, don't make them feel like, they right at the place they just left. Right. Because the first thing that went through my mind is I might as well go home. Right, that's so your that house. You, you need to put him easy. out. It's not always that easy. Sometimes you have to get out of your own house right. to get the person out <laughs> or to right. get away. And, that, and that's what it was. It was it was late, it was freezing. Right. You know, and I, I'm running with a t-shirt, no shoes, my baby's behind me. She's looking terrified. And I'm like, this is my biggest plight looking at her. You know, mm -hmm. like this shouldn't even be happening. Right. I even I went so far. I sat around a round table with shout out to my homie. I'm not even gonna call his name. Um, with some weapons, and we was gonna take him out. Right. My heart is not like that, and I couldn't do it. Right. Um, and I don't recommend that for anybody to do that. But what right. I will tell you is, live, fight back. Um, and any, any means necessary, fight back. And I don't mean kill the person. What I'm saying is fight. Fight for yourself. Fight for your sanity. Fight for your babies. Fight for your home. You know, fight for, for you, that person inside that was lost. Yeah, because that's all it is. It's, it's a moment um, that we feel like we're just not worth anything else. And that's all it is. It's not that you're weak. It's not that you're no, no less than anybody else. The hardest thing for somebody in a domestic violence relationship to do is leave. And right. it's one of the most unsafe things to do. You done took all your abuser's power. You ain't got nothing to lose now. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I want people to understand that we're not weak. Not um, you, know, and you mentioned, um, you know, if you're just sitting there not doing anything and you mentioned about there are steps you can take. Get a plan. Put a mm -hmm. dollar away. Get mm -hmm. extra phone numbers. Hide you a phone up under the bed. Have you a support system. It could be somebody that work at the pizza shop. Listen, if I call you and I don't say nothing, I need you to send the police to my house. Talk right. to people. They will help you. Yeah. Um, you'd be surprised. That's what, 
Yeah, that's what I had to do. I, um, I, you know, after having the twins, I just started banking my money. And so I made sure that I didn't want to leave with two, with, with two babies without anything. Um, so even though I was there for a couple of months planning, um, mm-hmm. I, I planned and I made sure that um, I had something when I left. But then that, that last incident, I was like, you know what? I've planned enough. It's time to go. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I just want to clarify something. Was it your your husband that hurt you, or was it a boyfriend? No, this was actually a boyfriend. Okay. Um, my husband and I were separated, so he was living in Fayetteville, and I was living okay. in Fayetteville. Okay. That's so, what I, that's I, what I wasn't gets, sure about. Yeah, a lot of people, especially people that know me and know my husband, they're like, wait a minute now, who's, who's doing the abuse? Now I know good and yeah. well. Yeah. You know, so, and, and because I kept it so under wrap, and it was um, really, really a short period of time that I really just stayed really private and didn't tell people. Um, my mother came over one day and she was she felt something because she said, um, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing. And she's like, no, because you're too quiet in your own house. Right. So I knew that she knew something. Um but she never, I guess she wanted me to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I definitely appreciate you sharing that piece about it's, it's several things that you said tonight, you know, that if you have someone that runs to you, don't make them feel like they shouldn't or they shouldn't have run to you or they shouldn't have left or, you know, because it, it's not your story. It's not your life. You can't tell a victim. You can't tell someone that's, that's fleeing what to, what to do, you know, that, that's yours. You can't tell someone what you would do yeah. It's up to that person to decide when they have had enough. And when just they open leave, your arms. yes, just open your arms, open your home, open your resources, whatever it is that you have that you can give to help that person give, because you're right. That step, that step right there that says, that's it. I'm getting out of here. That is the strongest thing that any victim can do yeah. um, and them you know if you stay it is not a sign of weakness a lot of enduring that is a sign of strength and you um protecting your children or you wanting to make sure that you 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 have a home over your head those are signs of, of strength those are things that mothers should do however we don't want to be, be strong and have all of our strength in the abusive relationship. We wanna use that strength to get out of the abusive relationship. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I really, really appreciate you sharing that part. That's really important for people to know. If you have someone mm-hmm. who's in an abusive relationship and they come to you, don't make them feel like crap for coming to you. Mm-hmm. That's never their time. Yeah, Support them in their time. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll never ask again. They won't right. ask anybody else. Yeah. Um, and you don't want that on your, you don't want that on your your heart that you turn them away and mm-hmm. they they got killed or something worse you know something happened that um yeah. that could have been avoided if you would have listened and met them right where they are at that moment yeah just that's all and and a lot of times too to reiterate that um a lot of people are not prone to call a 911 the first thing i hear a lot of people say is call the police on them do you know some of these clowns will kill you for calling 911 on them? Mm-hmm. So when the police leave, because they're leaving, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. we have to live there. Mm-hmm. So 911, guys, if you're listening to me, is mm-hmm. not always an option. And I'm, I'm sorry, in the Black community, when the white police officers come out to a domestic violence dispute, they think we're just hood rat niggas in the street fighting. They're not going to help you. And that's not a shot at law enforcement. Some of them are nice. But mm-hmm. I'm just keeping it real, because I don't know no other way. I've been in a lot of situations where domestic violence victims are treated like crap by the police. But it's yeah. your fault. Why are you staying there? Have him arrested. He is arrested and he's out in 20 in 48 hours and nobody even called me to tell me he was out. Right. So why yeah. are we calling that, me? Oh, oh, that happened so much. I, I had a young lady who came to me and she said, I was planning to go, so forth and so on. I, you know, I figured that someone would let me know that he was being released. No one let me know. And next thing I know, he's knocking on my door, trying to get back because and no one supposed informed to, her. They're supposed right. to notify you. And a lot of times they'll come out with the most nonchalant attitude um, instead of being protective and serving the community like they're supposed to. They're just stacking up their quota and taking their paycheck. And that's not fair to the people that really, really need help. 
Right. It's just really not. And to all those ladies out there, one more disclaimer, Tiffany, I'm going to shut up. Mm -hmm. those no, ladies no, out you're there, fine. <laughs> calling 911 on these brothers because he was at Sally House the other night. Don't do that because this makes it really, really hard for us <laughs> to try to get legislation changed when you lie and say that he's abusive and he's really not. That's not fair to the ones that are abusive. And it makes right. all law enforcement look at the situations like, well, mm -hmm. she's just lying because she's mad because he was at Sally House. Let him stay over there at Sally House. That's your best revenge. Do not call 911 on that man. They're probably going to shoot him or try to right. kill him. You know what everything's right. going on, ladies. Mm -hmm. Grow up. Be mindful of right. you putting that man's life in jeopardy. And you're going to feel that when he gets hurt, especially if there was no abuse. And a lot of times yeah. there is not. When you yes. look at a lot of these domestic violence calls, watch the officers when they get out the car. Watch how nonchalant they are and they're just moseying along like, oh, here we go, because they already know what they're walking into. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, it's, it's somebody that just felt like calling 911. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't do that, ladies. Um, just leave them alone. Let them have Sally. That's the best she can do. Take Sally and don't worry about calling 911 because you're getting yourself in trouble. And technically, if he got, if Sally done scratched him on the back that night, you going to jail too because if he can say that you scratched him, that's 48 hours of domestic violence for both parties. So let him stay with Sally and don't try to get revenge and call a 911 on that man. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Unfortunately, you know, our our, our sisters, you know, not, and I'm not talking about sisters as in color. I'm talking about right. sisters as in women. Sometimes um, you get mad and you say, well, how can I get back at him and, and love to pick up 911 and say, yes. he did this, that, the third. Um, and, uh, that, you know, that's not, that's not good because yeah. if you keep crying wolf and the police officers are getting there or the judges are, t or, are looking at your case, it, 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 unfortunately, when something really does happen, then the help is not there. Absolutely. And, and when it does, and when, even if it is there, it's scarce. And they're not believing you um, and that kind of thing, you know, and, and your status, which is why we try to change legislation. Any domestic violence, even BVP, am I saying that right? Yeah, I said yeah. it right. Um, <laughs> we're all, any domestic violence organizations are all for changing legislation. That's what we need, that old age law that you can go down to the magistrate and just say, oh, Tiffany slapped me, go lock her up. They're coming to get you. Mm -hmm. That's been in place for decades, centuries. Mm -hmm. It's time for it to go. It's not mm -hmm. fair. Anybody can just go down there and do that. Same thing with domestic violence, that two-sided law. You mm -hmm. got a 200 pound man on me and I happen to scratch his neck. You're going to arrest yeah. me for that? And yeah. I'm going to jail. Yeah. I so have there's a, a lot of things mm -hmm. that needs to be I know a young lady right now. She's on house arrest for defending herself. See? She's on house arrest right now for defending herself. This man tried to kill her. She had marks on her neck bruises on her chest from him punching her. She tried to defend herself. Wow. And I, I believe maybe he something happened. He had marks from her right. defending herself and she was arrested. And now she I has to go to court. And now that's on her record for yep. defending yep. herself. I've heard that so many times. Um, yep. And it's, it's unfortunate because I, I know another young lady, um, I won't mention her name, but um, she is the same thing. She was defending herself and he, got to the police before she did. That's another thing. Because he almost strangled her to death. So it took her a minute to compose herself to make a phone call. He called on her and she was, uh, you know, someone high up in the, in the education, um, you know, education, um, mm, in education field, lost That's her true. job, everything, and was not able to accept a position as a principal at a school that she was offered because oh, yeah. he put charges out on her, lost everything, everything. So now she's fighting to get her, her name back. And because he, because he called the police first. That's how it works too. And that's all so, the, the yeah. laws, how they talk about them now that were already put in place, designed to keep us where we are because most of domestic violence is in the black community, black, Hispanic community, we have the highest number. So those those laws were already set in place for us. So yeah. now they've got it to where, okay, y'all wanna fight, both of y'all going. And they actually thought that that was gonna keep the calls down, but mm -hmm. it didn't. And mm -hmm. now with COVID, the numbers have really, really skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. um, there's nowhere for these women to go. You know, we've been, I've been trying hard to get a shelter here. Um, finances, the grants are just not there like they should be. There's mm -hmm. one shelter here, you gotta get out in 30 days. 
There's mm-hmm. another one that doesn't take children. Um, so it's really hard. They have nowhere to go. I picked up a whole family of five um, out of a, a huddle house at two o'clock in the morning. Like my heart couldn't even leave the girl. And she called me. She's like, you know, I, don't have, I have nowhere to go. I'm, I'm in my, I'm in the huddle house. I got my kids, my van, you know, she got the van packed up with clothes and stuff. I know how that feels to mm-hmm. not have nobody. So I, I couldn't let my husband like, you have bed bugs, roaches in here, all these people come down the street. <laughs> but my heart, I'm like, Lord, please don't bring the bed bugs. Just, just let the girl sleep here. You know, she was able to get herself together that night and call some people and she headed to New York that morning. So if I can do that, mm-hmm. I felt great the next morning. Like the clown that she was fighting with is here somewhere, you know, right. she's all the way in New York. So that was my, um, my peace of mind because I knew she was safe. You know, yeah. I can right. deal with the roaches and stuff later, but I can leave that girl in the huddle house where she was yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, it's, I'm thankful that you were able to help her because um, you're right, the shelters are full. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the shelter here, the big shelter here, they only let a uh, victim stay there for three months. Three months is not a lot of time when you have been isolated from family and friends, haven't worked in years because your abuser doesn't want you to work, you know, to control you. That three months is not a lot of time to get yourself together when you've been in an abusive relationship for a number of years. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very hard to turn over your life in three months. Um, and then I get the phone call. I can't stay there anymore. I need emergency shelter. So then we try to provide shelter, but that's only short term. So yeah, the need is there and domestic violence has been on the rise. We've been seeing news news articles on it. We've, we've you know, the, the police officers are, are very much aware of things being on the rise. Hospitals know that it's on the rise. The money, but the money's not there. Why? Why? And you're they actually right. Cut, because most victims- uh, Trump actually cut funding for our organization. Yeah. Uh, well, not mine, but the whole domestic yeah. violence organization. So yeah. that was one of the first things he did when he got in office. And yeah. I won't attribute that to um, why our numbers have gone up. I know COVID has a lot to do with that and that, that mm-hmm. isolation being stuck with somebody for that amount of hours and the way things are now. But mm-hmm. by him pulling that funding, it almost just opened the door. Um, mm-hmm. Because now you just have your grassroots. You have your people like me um, mm-hmm. coming out of my little pocket with little five, ten dollars or whatever I can do. Mm-hmm. If you get a hundred of us, that helps. But yeah, if it's just it me um, and, and Johnny over here doing it, there's that's not enough. Um, not. So you just kind of got to reach back, do what you can, put you know, put your money where your heart is and, and try to just be there for somebody. I, that's my biggest thing. It's just as long as I can do what nobody did for me. Since yeah. I don't know what that feels like, I want to be able to let somebody else know what that feels like. You yeah. know, I don't know what that feels like to have help and have somebody say, it's going to be okay, girl. I didn't have none of that. And I, I think that's why I'm not cocky. I'm, I'm very humble. I really am. But I've gotten to the point now where I don't put up with a lot of stuff. And I'm a little person. Like, I'm not, you know, a big girl. I don't be fighting and all that stuff. Be pulling off my wigs and breaking my nails up and stuff. That's not <laughs> what I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I feel like God, you know, they always say he don't give you no more than you can bear. And sometimes I look at him like, little old me, now you, gonna, you did me like all of this. I, yeah. I got to take all of this. Yeah. So I, I stand on everything that I grew up with, which was nothing. So now I live for everything. Um, you know, I literally, I said that to you before, Brooklyn literally raised me. And I didn't have people to come tell me, okay, this is what you do with your menstrual. I found that out on Notion Avenue. You'll read that in the book. Mm-hmm. How 14, um, that's how I figured out what a menstrual cycle was. Mm-hmm. Running down Notion Avenue trying to, before the blood start dropping. You know, mm-hmm. I, nobody told me that. I didn't know. But right. that was, you know, so right. I need to be able to be that for other people because I, even my daughter, she know everything. She, and I'm very frank. She know what a penis look like. She know what a mm-hmm. condom looks like. She mm-hmm. know her vagina is not supposed to have no odor. She's 13. Mm-hmm. You know, she's not going to grow up dumb because right. there's a lot of things that I'm sitting there looking around like, what's that? Like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that for her. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, we have the panel on what how to talk to your kids about sexual abuse and sexual assault, and that was one of the things that all of the ladies on the panel said: talk to your children about those things that you weren't talked about. Talk to them about sex. Talk to them about the hygiene. Talk to them about you know what signs to look for and grooming and and so forth when it when it comes to uh, you know people that are actually seeking children out to to, mm-hmm. to harm them. 
What are those things to look for? And the, and the fact that you have the right, even as a child to say, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Or I don't want to hug Uncle Johnny or something like that. You know, right. so um, it's, yeah, it's really important. I have a daughter too. I talk to her about a lot of things. Um, and she's 12 and that's because I want her to, to know what's going on with her body, but I also want her to be, um, mindful of what's out there and that not everybody is nice. Not everybody is, has your best interest at heart. There are people who will seek you out to hurt you and you need to be aware of what those signs and signs are. Um, and that you can come and talk to me and tell me anything. If anyone's hurt you, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's someone I know come and talk to me because I want to make sure that you know that I'm going to protect you. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what time is it? Oh, okay. We're doing good time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, mm, what else do we want to talk about? Uh -oh, talk about me in hot seat. <laughs> yeah, we talked about your, your books. We talked about, what was your first book again? I'm sorry. That was when a woman's fed up. When a woman's when a woman sped up, um, then you had wet. Now you have resurrection and heals. That's what we need to talk about. Your organization. Let's talk about your organization that you have. <laughs> okay. Well, my sister's dream. Well, I actually have two. My Morning Star is. I'm not gonna say it's kind of sitting dormant, um, but with COVID and a lot of things going on, it's not a whole lot we can do. Morning Star was a travel is a travel organization. I kind of wanted to get the kids out of Cumberland County, out of whatever county they live in. Most of the children that I ran across never got outside the city. Mm. Um, so I've, I've always kind of just wanted to try. And a lot of, I'm born and raised in New York, and it's still a lot of New York that I hadn't seen. So mm. I could imagine how they are here, you know, with everything so spaced out. So I just wanted to do um, a lot of trips. The only one we got to do so far was Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. We did a go eight event out there. That was really, really awesome. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get back in tune, you know, get some kids on some trips. Right now I'm working with a virtual camp where the kids come and they bring their laptops and they do the actual schoolwork. Um, so shout out to Shanika. She started that this week. And so we need some more kids. So if you guys not bringing some kids out there, you can sell a basket and that's their tuition. And the okay. basket has like um, Lysol and they're all different varieties of different things, but more like a fundraiser. So the parents don't really necessarily have to come out their pocket. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And that's from eight to 12. So that's one thing I'm doing. My sister's dreamer. And that's, I would say that's, they're all my babies, but that's my big baby. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted to take her global. I want to have like hundreds of women in all 50 states. So when we have domestic violence issues and we have these queens calling, I don't have to call around. Like me and you did that several times, calling around, trying to find some money mm -hmm. or trying to find somewhere for somebody to go. I want to be able to, who's that Tiffany? Okay. Tell her to go so-and-so and we got her. That's right. the end of it. So I want, I, that's my goal for my sister's dream, to actually be that dream for the ones that can't dream for themselves at the moment. Um, a lot of times when we're in that, like you said, three months, it took you three months to get your mind back right. Right. Let <laughs> alone to find a job yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of a relationship. Because nine times out of ten, you're leaving out of there broke. Um, right. Your head is messed up. The kids are all over the place. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's more than just resources. It's more than just a place to stay. We need counselors. We need some mental health people around. We need just some good sisters that somebody can actually just pick up the phone and say, listen, I just need to talk to somebody. Right. Don't have that. Oh, I don't have time right now. Can you call me back and find me? And I get it. You know, everybody got stuff to do. But sometimes you never know that conversation might just save somebody's life. Because if he don't kill us, she might try to kill herself. That's true. You know, so I think about right. all of that. Um, so that's, I really would love to have my sister's dream or have some really, really good queens grouped together in each state. Um, you know, almost like a, the, what, how you call it? What Harry had, girl? The railroad. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, almost like the underground railroad. We just got yeah. them everywhere. And if we got to go get them out, we can go get them out too. Right, you know? right, yeah. I would I like love that. to I get like involved that. with the um, underground. Um, really right. hard to get in. They don't trust anybody. And you have to be vetted out of this world. Um, but that's really my goal. I want to go like enough and kick the door in and snatch the girls <laughs> out and you're not hitting her no more. And she got to right. move to Maine somewhere, then that's fine. Right. Um, but it's a lot of women out there that would love to be able to call somebody that just come and get them. Take yeah. them to another state where they can start over. Yeah, well, I'm down too. I'll be on the railroad underground. Right. <laughs> it's in the works. Uh, yeah. I've been talking yeah. to some people and trying to get my name in there and get my feet in the door. They really, really have to trust you. And they, when I say these, some of these people are like some gun-toting sisters that mm -hmm. are not playing, 
Mm -hmm. um, when they call them, it's almost like bounty hunting. You know, yeah. when they call them and they got to come get you, they come and get you. Yeah. And that's what I want to be, that Wonder Woman, go, you know, and help somebody out. Because I swear, yeah. I wish I had somebody come get me a couple of times. Just, just yeah. where my brother's at. I don't have no yeah. brother. Somebody come beat him up or something. <laughs> None of that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, it, it's tough in my skin. So now I can take some punches for some of these other queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Well, <laughs> I'm down. You let me know. Because I am I am a firm believer that um, for I was fortunate that the police officers <clears throat> that came to my home several occasions um the first time they came they were like uh this is crazy you know because of what happened that what transpired he he the police came to the door and asked for me um and he sat down and made himself a sandwich in front of the police officers like like they weren't there to come to see what was going on with me um he sat down and made himself a sandwich and they said to me he's crazy you need to get out of here the second time I called it was the same two police officers so I was I was blessed I kept getting these same two police officers one was a, a white male and one was a, a black black woman and that third time when I called they said are you ready and I said I'm ready and they made him leave to give me time to get my stuff and to get out the house so I was blessed in that I had some compassionate police officers. Um, so he definitely had my back, but a lot of a lot of victims don't um, because they've been alienated from their family. I was my parents wouldn't even come see me because of him. So um, you know, a lot of people don't have that support system, and they need someone to be able to say, "Look, I heard about you. I need to get out of here. Can you get me out of here?" Yeah. Um, so that's definitely needed and um yeah yeah and they have when i say it is just like that movie enough where you uh -huh. go through these different houses and I, like i said i've talked to several people and i've even mm -hmm. seen one lady sent me a video she deleted it right off my phone no i was standing there she deleted it as soon as i looked at it so right. when i say very very i love it though because it, it it just gives me this sense of oh my gosh i can really get these people out of there go get right. some but you know because right. that's what they do they they really they got people on boats um, they have people with helicopters. They getting them out of there. So mm -hmm. the problem with that, that I, because the lady asked me, you know, she wanted my opinion. And the problem that I foresee with that is nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Like you telling me, so that means that I would have to call you, tell you where my, this lady is at for you to go get her. So you, you know, cut out that middleman. Let me in. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because I've got access to a lot of victims that may need your help, even mm -hmm. though they do as well. And mm -hmm. I know that it's illegal. Um, most of it is really illegal, but they saving lives. Right. You know what I mean? So I don't understand for one, why it would be illegal if the police it's, don't want to do it. I was about to why say it's illegal to be beat on and to, exactly. be, to be abused and raped and so forth and so on. But exactly. you know, yeah, I'd rather break break laws, um, getting a victim out, out of that situation than, you know. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that's really interesting. And um, would definitely love to, to learn about that, you know, mm -hmm. off, offline. So, um, yeah, I, I am so happy to finally be able to talk to you um, about, you know, your experiences, about your book, um, about your new book, Resurrection and Heals, um, in collaboration with the with the other three sisters. Um, Miss Danielle, she's a, a beautiful soul. I've been um, had the opportunity the last couple of work weeks to work with her on a couple of her projects. Um, so I'm really excited for you ladies. Um, you are doing amazing work in the community. You're inspiring others. You're inspiring me. Um, and I'm, I'm just very, very happy to to be in your your network and to and to call you a friend, you've definitely been a friend to me, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Definitely. I love your life, girl. I love your life. Shout out to some guy named Jay for always making these connections. Yes, yes, yes. And he's <laughs> he's been watching the me. whole interview. He's been watching the whole interview, so yes, he just he heard that shout out because he's been watching. <laughs> yes, yes, he has been. I, I would say pivotal in some a lot of the growth um, with. A resurrection and heals with everything mm -hmm. wet. Um, yeah. Very good promo. So if y'all need some promo, you better go hit up some guy named Jay Jonathan Coleman. Shout out mm -hmm. to Blacktopia site. 
um that's how we met so yeah we got yeah that's out. how we met he connected <laughs> us yep he sure did um yeah, yeah he's a, he's he's great at promoting and He's very, he's outstanding at providing support for people mm -hmm. who are entrepreneurs, who are authors, who just want to get, you know, more promo for their businesses. Yeah. Um, he's going to support you the whole time, um, the whole way. And he's going to, he's going to go above and beyond for you um, mm -hmm. to make sure yeah, that your brand gets out there. He, he did. Yes. Yeah, I saw the picture. I yeah, saw the picture. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yes, so I love him. He's such a great guy. He's such, and he's so he's so sincere about it. It's not yeah. about money for him. He's he's sincerely wants to see you when just grow and blossom, yeah. and he's going to do whatever he can to make sure that that happens. So yes. yes. Thank you for the shout out for Miss Jonathan Coleman, who is watching. He's been watching the whole time. Yes, yes, yes. I, I can see, I can see his face now. He's cheesing. He's cheesing uh -huh. and watching right now. <laughs> okay, Miss um, Radia. So we're in um, October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, before we end, what would you like to say for maybe um, victims that are watching or even advocates that are watching? Well, how, how, are, how would you like to end your interview? Oh, gosh. I would like to just encourage everybody, victims, advocates especially, reach back. Reach back more, especially if you're a victim because you guys are the ones we listen to. I listen most to somebody that's been in my shoes and been in my experience. I don't necessarily want to read your books. I don't care about your degrees. I want to hear about what you lived because I know where I get my experience from. And your best teacher is experience. So reach back more, ladies. Don't be so quick to, oh, she's stupid because she's staying. You never know what she's going through to stay. And you never know if your grandmother, your great-grandmother stayed before that. So be mindful of the way you treat other people. Um, everybody's not going to be your cup of tea. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, if you don't like it, pour it out, pour you some more, keep it moving, but don't be against the next sister. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. If we pull together, we take away everybody's power. You know how bad black women are? Mm. I do, <laughs> especially when you put them in a room together. Mm -hmm. Powerful. And I want to be like that. I want to be that powerful, but I need y'all to do it. I can't do it by myself. So we need more than them, them, them two heels. We need like 20 heels and something <laughs> behind us. Um, yes. It's bad when we come together. We yes. are so vulnerable and so toxic when we against each other. And the world knows it. So if they can figure that out, why can't we? I figured it out. So I'm here. If you need to reach my sister's dreamer, you can email me at msyp73 at gmail.com. Or you can go to my sister's dreamer domestic violence support group on Facebook. Or you can just Google stars with a Z pen mm -hmm. and you will find everything. My sister's dreamer, everything morning star, everything wet, everything right there. Right. Um, so don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Even if you just need me to listen, I'll put you on speaker and I'll just sit there and let you have at it. And if you need me to say something, then I will. Um, a lot of times people don't need your opinion. They value it. Right. They so if they ask listen. for it, mm -hmm. if they ask for it, just know that. We don't need you, but we, we value you enough to care about what you think. So right. you may say something to save somebody's life. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't have to say anything else after that. <laughs> yes. Reach out. Reach out. Um, definitely come together um, because with, I think it was um, Rodney McGill, I believe. He said, if we would all just come together for the same purpose that we all have with separate organizations, if we all just came together and worked together, we could help even more people. And that, that's including us sisters. You're right. So, that is so true. It's not about I, my, my. It's about us. Because if it was all yours, you'd be on the wall by yourself. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I like it. And be nice. Be nice. <laughs> <and respect. laughs> That's one thing I've always liked about you. You are very upfront and honest. And I, I rather someone be blunt with me. I respect that more than someone who's going to talk behind my back. So, girl, these people can't take me. That's why I have no <laughs> friends. They cannot yeah. take it. But I'm just, <laughs> I, I don't have that. Everything that I am is everything that I miss. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thank yeah. God for that because I don't want. People, the way people were to me, I don't want to be like that to nobody else. Mm -hmm. I, and if I can't come again and tell you, look, 
that your breast ain't. You know, <laughs> if my breast is bad, please tell me. You know, people, you, you never know. If my guy older, girl, you know, I was talking to my friend Shanika the other day about this. You know, we get a little, it be a little oniony right here sometimes. <laughs> ain't no shame in my game. Women sweat between their breasts. That's true. You You're know, right. I just learned that in my 40s because I'm walking around like, I know Bill well, I just got out the shower, got one deodorant. <laughs> Where is this onion at? So finally, I, I'm in the store with this lady and she was like, girl, do you smell my onions? I don't even know the girl. She's like, do you smell something? She puzzled like me. Girl, I'm, and I'm under her arm smelling her. I was like, I don't smell nothing. And then she walked like, girl, it was so funny. Look, she walked past me. And I was like, wait a minute, I smell something now. And then she did a shirt like this. She was like, I don't know. I was like, girl, it's your boobs. We in the store, child, in the Walmart, looking at our boobs, pulling sweat out. And I finally realized that's where the sweat was coming from. You know what I'm saying? So, girl, yeah, stuff like that. You got to be able to talk. If you're not my friend and you got me walking around smelling like an onion, and it ain't my arms, and we can't figure it out. I know my food cat ain't smell like no onion. So come on, girls. Like, you know what I'm saying? Be, be, be a friend, for real. Your wig lopsided. You got me sitting here in front of all of these people, and you see my wig lopsided, and you ain't said a word. Me and you gonna fight. That's just not right. I don't like people like that, and I don't want to be around. I need somebody to be like, girl, go get you a mint. Um, you know what I'm saying? Look, you got dirt up under you. You got broccoli in your teeth. Talk to me. What you here for? <laughs> but that's a true friend, right? That's a true friend. That they gonna right. tell you what's going on, <laughs> and still be able to call you the next day. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. kind of have exactly. grown friends around me because <laughs> everybody make mistakes. I need the kind of people that can pick up. Like I locked them keys in the car. Somebody <laughs> should. It was about. It was four of us. So not in that situation. But I need everybody to have a right hand and a left hand. So if my left ain't working, your right works. You know, or you don't serve no purpose. <laughs> Oh, no, boy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell everybody how they can find you again. <laughs> you can find me if you Google stars pen, S T A R Z P E N. Everything pops up. Submissive alpha underscore on IG. And um, Radia Johnson on Facebook, my sister's dreamer, Stars Pin business page. Everything Stars Pin is Google Stars Pin. You'll find her. Right. And go to Amazon. Both books are there. If you search up Radia Johnson, they'll both pop up. It nice, felt so nice. good looking at that. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, this is what I'm going to do. So um, at the beginning of our interview, I said that we were going to give away two of your books. Okay. So what we're going to do is you and I, we're going to look at the comments. We're going to see who was watching. And we're, you're going to pick a person. I'm going to pick a person. And we're going to give away these two books. Okay. Okay. Can we do it now? Yeah. Oh, we're going to wait. No, we can do it now. Okay. Okay. Let me see. <laughs> I got <laughs> I got to go see these comments. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I see somebody. You see somebody? Um, I ain't got no glasses on. Yeah, I see somebody. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I got, oh, I got two. Oh no, I can't choose. Okay, I'll I'll pick one. <laughs> okay, you gonna pick one? All right, all right. Okay, so come back on. Okay, yeah, I'll pick one. <laughs> okay, I got somebody. So drum roll. <laughs> my daughter actually pointed. She was like, "Here, pick her." So my free book is going to go to Miss Tia. Miss Tia, who is watching, is that that was yours too? <laughs> Well, see, the, the, we know that it was meant to be. So, Miss Tia, you have uh, won one of the one of the two free copies of Resurrection and Heels. So now you got to pick somebody else, Miss Rivia. Okay, let me. I'm gonna go with Jonathan because that was the okay, that was the all right. I had that's, Tia first. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Some guy named Jay. You got the copy. <laughs> okay, so Miss Tia and Mr. Jonathan have won the two um, copies of Resurrection and Heels. So thank you both for watching, and um, we love you both. And Miss Rivia, thank you so much for being us with us, Miss Stars Pen. Um, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye, you guys. <laughs>